Here is a lesson exploring 3D objects. It's a fun lesson that we're doing with our coding group on the 6th of November. My name is Aaron Bradley. I'm a teacher at Brian Evan Primary School, which is in Johannesburg, South Africa. And I hope that you're going to enjoy this video. The latter part of the video shows you a lot of the children's work as well as music integrated into it that's generated from an artificial intelligence system called AIVA. Go try it out. Working with 3D objects brings a whole lot of excitement to education. In this example, you see how Google is rotating the object. His Alsatian is facing the left, and there we see it from the back. And you can see how these handles are so wonderfully zooming in with that scroll bar to bring it in or out. It's just wonderful to just step back and watch all of this. Kalina in grade two is at work here. Pencil tool and a, she's going to color the sun in, chosen an orange. Look at the way she's coloring it. It's almost as if this picture was two-dimensional. Most of the other learners were more intrigued by the three-dimensionality of all of this. They manipulated the objects, moved them around, but didn't color in. Kalina is exploring a search for rainbows, though has moved on to all these other things in the 3D library. If you look at that, she's chosen a rose. There's a whole collection of different flowers. So it's to be the daisy. This daisy is going to take a place in her composition. And an exploration of rotation. Wonderful. Now we've got Andrew who is showing, and he's moving around a cat. Just looking at it, so lifelike. And look at those zooming in. You can see how Andrew's cat is all meshed up in these small triangles. All those edges and nodes are joined together to construct Andrew's cat. And now for the vertices. That's taken away the lines and you're only left with those little dots, the nodes. The UV set coordinates, that's got something to do with the texturing. So it would be something to do with the skin and the fur of the cat. The material ID obviously having something to do with the fill, what we would fill this cat, the fur that covers it, it will be the material ID. All right, so we're exploring all these different aspects. Once again, returning to those meshes, those triangles. Look at this. We've got a whole range of different views. Isometric right, isometric left. That changes our perspective somewhat. Obviously, the reset view would take everything back to where it was in the first place. has brought in two Dalmatians and this emoji pup. She's stretching it, moving left and right, and they're scaling it up. I'd really love to explore and see how this could be used more fully in our mainstream classroom. I think three-dimensional forms really brings a lot of excitement to children and it can be used very effectively. It just needs a bit of experimentation and also exploration. It's very unfortunate that so many South African children will never have this opportunity to interact with technology as we are doing here. What do we have here? Isn't it marvelous? dinosaur how marvelous is this Joshua is that a stegosaurus he says no it's not a stegosaurus 
Xavier's just told me it's called an ankylos ankylosaurus. I think I got that wrong. This is a herbivore. The rotation allows us to look at those spines on its back. Interesting. All armored, plated, and look at that tail with that little ball at the end of it. You can see how this gives a lot more information than one would normally get and how it could be widely used in a natural science class. An upside down Ankyello saw. We've got Kundai spider, a red spider. How many legs are on your spider, Kundai? Let's see if he can rotate it and show us how many legs are on there. Is he going to be able to do that? There we go, we got it. How many legs on that? He says there are eight legs on the spider. Well done, Kundai. Brilliant work. It's a beautiful red spider. And there you can see looking at it slightly from the top. obvious how this could be used in an anatomy lesson just looking at the spider from the bottom you can see if you zoomed in really close you'd be able to pick up all the various parts head abdomen and thorax quite clear for us there <laughs> has a space shuttle and a Mars rover. Look, Bongani, there's a lovely chocolate cupcake. Oh no, he's told me I haven't read properly. It says poop. see Alex. Alex is exploring a car. All different views of this car. Interesting. Now is that a clownfish? Of course. Finding Mimo. Ah, we've got a flamingo coming in. And we're going to manipulate that. Let's see what we can do with the flamingo. And here, Kimon has introduced us a goblin or some sort of troll. I don't really know what it is. But, uh, wonderful green object. Ah, see how it's, look, it's reading x-axis rotation. So we're moving it on the x-axis. Kimon, your monster is absolutely wonderful. He is tremendously beautiful. Bongani's beautiful house with this cool figure. And we 
we're rotating the house. Look at that, the degrees are shown and rotating it. And zooming in. We return to Luke's work. Marvellous, that spider right in the front there. And he's got a whole range of different objects all inside. Forget the name of that dinosaur. That is such a super sports car on the side there. And then we got this strange looking monster. I seem to have seen that in a film. That's the Mars rover, hey Luke? Yes, he says. And we're at the end of our video. I just wanted to thank everyone for participating and being part of today's lesson. It was a lot of entertainment and I really enjoyed looking at your wonderful pictures. to support and to subscribe to our YouTube channel and if you like the music you heard it was done with an AI generator called Aiva you can go onto the website and make your own Images that you saw here were just derived from a 3D visualizer and we it was done in 3D paint, I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm.